All right, hi everyone who joined so far. I see a lot of uh, familiar names here. It's great to see you all. We're gonna wait. Sorry for starting a few minutes late. We have some technical issues with uh, with Zoom. One of the most popular software for teleconferencing and, uh, and webinars. Still, people find find it slightly cumbersome to use. It's, it's fascinating. We got um, got a great show here for you today. Right now that I see that a lot of the attendees have joined. So thank you everyone for joining. My name is Marcus from, uh, from Host Away. We are going to do a presentation today and a, and a discussion uh, regarding accounting practices and empowering property managers to use financials uh, to gain the upper hand on both their business, but also manage the relationship with their owners. Um, I'm, uh, I'm the CEO of Hostaway, we're a property management uh, software for vacation rental property managers. Um, and I'm based here in Toronto, in Canada. We also got with us uh, Craig and Maria. Craig, would you like to introduce yourself? You've got a very interesting background there. Um, yeah, hi, Craig, Craig Saunders, um, CEO of Booking Trust. Um, we deal exclusively with accounting or trust accounting, host accounting, um, short-term property management um, rentals, and um, you know, interface directly with Hostaway. And um, yeah, that's where we, you know, that's that's our business. Hello, so hello everyone. This is Maria. I'm uh, the head of product here at Hostaway, working with Marcus, and very happy to be here tonight with. Uh, oh, morning, evening, wherever you are in the world, it's tonight, it's a night for me, uh, with Craig and the team of Booking Trust as well. I think you're muted, Marcus, you need to unmute. <laughs> All right. Um, so we're going to talk today. Um, right now, I'm going to give you a short overview of why you should stay here. So we're going to talk about accounting and trust accounting. Uh, for those of you who think this is uh, a boring topic, um, I don't think there's many of you out there. Um, but we're not going to go into any details here. We're going to talk about uh, what you should keep in mind, what is important. And especially if you're not doing trust accounting, if, you're, if you always have people telling you you need to start, uh, you should definitely stay around. Now, financial reporting is one of the most uh, most demanding aspects of running any business whatsoever, because you need to know how things are going. And there's, there's a lot of indicators there. You can have a guest who's very happy with their stay. Uh, but that doesn't guarantee you that you'll have money to pay your expenses. Now, financial reporting is the missile link there in between that tells you exactly how well your business is doing. Owner statements is, uh, is not a important topic because the, the owners trust you with their most valuable assets, the real estate that they have. Um, and in order to keep trusting you, you need to use transparency to keep and earn their trust. And owner statements are one of the most powerful tools out there to do that. Um, we're going to also have a Q&A session, so uh, feel free to use the chat, but you can also uh also uh ask in the qa section put up any question at all if it's something that's been mostly covered in the webinar already i won't uh, pick it up and if it's something that i know we, we won't answer or it's not relevant then i won't pick it up but most of the questions that people ask during these webinars um do tend to get answered so let's get uh, let's get started uh so i'll hand over to craig Good morning, evening, afternoon to everyone. Um, so I'm going to just run through, first of all, the, the, the typical growth cycle of a lot of these businesses and, and where accounting fits in and at which point, you know, we've probably had all a lot of pain points in, you know, in, in the business. So again, typically, especially in these days when, when the entry levels, you know, quite 
um, easy for people to start the property business, property management businesses. You start with five, you know, a few properties, maybe your own property. Um, you start managing a few for a few friends. Uh, you've got spreadsheets to, you've, you've hooked up to host away. All the PMS is running well. You're getting bookings. You've got a few properties. You're managing a buy by a spreadsheet to start with because you've got some basic accounting skills. Um, <clears throat> you've got a few more friends and you get up to 10 properties. You're still sort of managing by, by a spreadsheet and you're getting the statements to the owners. And then you start to get a few more owners that maybe if not friends of friends and you, you get up to 15 and you're still doing spreadsheets. And then <clears throat> you're starting to struggle with the accounting part. Bookings are coming in. So from a trust accounting point of view, and I just want to sort of, first of all, probably define what trust accounting is so it doesn't turn everybody off. Um, I mean, in Australia, it's legislated that there is trust accounting for short-term property managers. So <clears throat> we have to run a trust account. Now, a trust account is no different to any other bank account. Um, the principles are that you have a, an account that all the owner money, all the re reservation money goes into, and then a separate account where you run your business from. Now, the only difference between a trust account and good accounting practices essentially is that at the end of the year, somebody actually checks your work. So you get, you know, somebody, so a trust account, you get an auditor in and they check that everything you did was actually correct. Now, <clears throat> they can do that, you know, and that's, that's the only difference. Aside from that, it's just good accounting practices. So that if you can imagine that you're running your, your business on a spreadsheet, and while it might be fairly good accounting practices and everybody's happy, if you had somebody who came in to check and see whether you got 100% on your accounting practices, then you would probably start to look at how to improve those. So whether your state or country is legislated for trust accounting or not, um, the principles of trust accounting are all the same, which is once you get to a certain level of properties, your the 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 account the level of accounting that's required to keep accuracy and control over your business starts to grow, um, and a lot of time spreadsheets, um, zero QuickBooks, whatever it is that you're using, which are essentially especially QuickBooks, zero, um, they're they're business accounting software. Right now, you can bend business accounting software into having different ledgers for your properties, um, working it all out, and then typing up your statements at the end, which are really invoices. So you can bend all these softwares into, um, <clears throat> in, into making, it, making it work for you. But when it comes down to best practices um, of accounting, that's really where it allows your business to start to grow. And when you get queries, for example, from owners about statements from three months ago, um, <clears throat> if you've got purpose-built software that runs the accounting part underneath your PMS, then it's very easy for you to peel out those, those details because everything's in organized ledgers. It's a flow on effect. It's like looking at everybody's individual bank account. So again, I would say that essentially, the main difference between trust accounting and let's say trust or host accounting, whether it's legislated or not. The main difference is um, with tr when you're running a separate account with owner money in it, you're actually running a bank. When you're running your own business, you're running your own business. Use QuickBooks, use um, Xero, use whatever business software you want to run your business with. But when you're putting money and looking after money on behalf of other people, which is what you're doing when, because you're managing these you're managing these properties on behalf of other people. It's not your money. Um, you're actually you're actually running a bank. So within each individual property, they need to be separate accounts that are all accountable. And then you also need to be able to total all that up and measure against what's actually in your bank or typical what they call the bank reconciliation. And the bank reconciliation part, while it all seems very tedious um, and, you know, and unnecessary in essence, because you can run your business without it, 
Um, what it does is it ensures that you're actually in control of every aspect of your business. And the, the accounting part, once HostAway puts all that money into your account, the accounting part of it is as important as getting the money into your account as, as, as but it usually gets left because especially at the start of the business, getting the bookings in, getting the properties is a very important part. And I do know there are some, definitely some property managers who fight at the very start, set everything up. And then there are, you know, a series of property managers who, write, who, who try to play catch up at the end. And there's a few that, you know, there's, everyone has different strengths and weaknesses according to how much they know about accounting. And I, my general impression is the less confident you are with accounting, the more likely you are to put off that stage where you start to organize it. Um, and if there is any financially, and it does seem like a cost center. So again, with your um, property management systems or, or your advertising or getting bookings in, usually the more effort you put, the more bookings you get, the more properties you get, the more money you make, right? You can almost see that that effort really makes a return. Whereas with once the money's hit your account, looking after the money, the more money, the more effort you put in the day, the more um, accurate you are, the more efficient, you know, the more, ac well, the, the more accurate you are and the more time you spend, it's not going to look like it's making you any more money. Because on the surface, there's no actual return. But what you do get from having the, um, the back process or the, the back office process, what you do get from having the back office process the efficiency levels and the money that gets made is um, <clears throat> is not easily quantifiable, but it does re get returned in having owners that are comfortable with the owner statement because they're accurate. It becomes in the fact that you've got no longer any variances because you've, you haven't um, forgotten to put in a charge that you forgot to do and then a month later you've realized and you realize now you can't put it in because it's too late and the owner might query it. All these things, you're on top of everything and therefore any fees and charges that you put in don't tend to be queried by the owner because they have trust in your system. So again, if I use the bank analogy, if you went into your bank and they seemed a little bit if you, if you ask them a question about what you're in your account and they went, hang on a minute, I'll, I'll get back to you tomorrow and let you know. If your bank had that sort of time delay and didn't seem they really can get their fingers on the answers right away, you would may not necessarily leave the bank if they came back with the right answer, but you would be so, certainly questioning their, their um, accounting practices. Um, and you don't want any of these um, owners to start necessarily questioning your accounting practices because some owners are really good and dogged about accounting and they will leave to find somebody who just has better accounting just has better owner statements now what we do in booking trust as you know and, and that's why i mean it doesn't matter whether you're running a um, legislated, there's a few states in America that legislated, North Carolina, for example, they need trust accounting. They know how trust accounting works. They know the, the processes. But <clears throat> I would suggest that at any point in your business, if you're still using spreadsheets or something that's not purpose built um, <clears throat> to look after the money after it hits your bank account, um, then I suggest you're probably spending more hours it's taking, it's more stressful. And from my anecdotal evidence, the bigger you get, on average, there's, there's basically a variance of around $100 per month per property that gets added on. So out of, out of sorry, $900 per month, but basically about $10, $15, $20 per month per property that doesn't get accounted for. So after a couple of years, you can easily get a variance between what's in your account that should be there and what's actually in your account. And um, they're the things that keep you up, at, they're the things that keep property owners up at night sometimes when they realize that their accounting practices have actually 
mm. you know, got a spir it's a spiral out of control. So, but the reason for this for this particular talk is again to um, <clears throat> make everyone aware that there are solutions there for their accounting side. That um, Postaway, for example, is 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 doing a great job in the property management or the PMS side. Um, and not to forget what happens to the money after you hit your account and the advantages and the efficiencies you can get by tightening that up, by making it more efficient and um, by buying some software, you know, maybe ours, maybe somebody else's, just getting some software that's purpose built for that, for that reason. And I would also just finish off on this note that um, the industry itself has gone through a transformation over the last, you know, at least five years, if not 10 years, but certainly accelerated in the last five years with a lot of, um, <clears throat> it's the industry itself is becoming more mature and as it's becoming more mature, I'm definitely seeing more focus on the actual accounting principles of what people are doing. Um, like any, you know, like any industry, it's, they, you know, it gets started and now this is the, the, the back office part that starts to be looked at. So, you know, my suggestion is that, you know, by having good accounting practices and software um, after the money hits your account, then A, you get more trust by the, by the owners and that definitely helps. Um, you'll find that there's a level of efficiency in looking up queries, sure, you might get your statements out in the same amount of time, but going back and looking at queries and feeling confident that the money you've got in your account is actually all accounted for um, allows you to concentrate on the other things you're actually, you know, looking at. And if, and again, from our perspective, uh, we have a accounting service that um, that we provide with the software. And again, you just if you've got somebody, if you don't have expertise in that area. Um, it's always good to reach out to somebody for expertise about what to do at that point, because, um, you know, at, there, at some point there is, um, you know, hopefully as you get successful, there is a lot of money coming into your account. And, um, and that's when control really becomes, you know, as it becomes larger, control, accuracy, and knowing whose money it is becomes ultimately very important. So, that's, um, <clears throat> that's my summation of, first of all, let's call it trust accounting, but I'm talking about good accounting practices, the advantages of why we do that, um, how it's important that your accounting software interfaces to your property management software to stop double handling. Um, and, and I hope that what I've said at least tweaks some interest in, you know, if you haven't got your accounting practices 100% locked up, um, I hope to tweak some interest in there is things out there and platforms out there and software out there that can help. So, yeah, thank you for your time. All right, thank you very much. Now we will hand over to uh, Maria, who will present uh, or talk about financial reporting and own owner statements. Uh, Maria, would like you? Do you like to take over the screen share? Yes, if you allow me. One second. Can you see my screen? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so thank you, um, Craig. I think you touched on very good points, like, um, you know, not, not um, uh, having good software and having one point of uh, where all the information is, when all the data is, is basically what we're looking for. So uh, at HostAway, in our connection with Booking Trust, we have that. So for those of you that connect to multiple channels, by channels I mean Airbnb, Wearable, Booking.com, Expedia and all the likes, or that simply want to have one place to check all of your numbers, uh, we offer a couple of solutions. So one is for PMs, so property managers and property owners to understand your business performance, and we call it financial reporting. That's what you see here in the screen. 
and another one is mostly for PMs, so property managers, to create and manage owner statements, which can also be done in Book and Trust, and I'll show you how. So, um, so with our financial tool, you will see here a number of KPIs, a number of metrics that we present uh, in, in one page, and both systems, both financial reporting and owner statements, are built on top of uh, our unique technology to get the most accurate financial information from channels and payment providers. And Craig actually mentioned before accuracy, and accuracy is what's really, uh, you know, what makes the difference, uh, you know, uh, running your business. You need to know where your money comes from, where you uh, uh, may be losing money, where uh, all your revenue is. So, in, in our tools, we are able to itemize every reservation financial, so we are able to identify nightly rates, uh, fees, taxes, discounts, etc., everything that comes from a reservation, and, and, uh, and also identify all the channel commissions and all the payment services commissions that you pay, and all that together. We, uh, we create uh, this tool called Financial Reporting. We offer you an overview here, which is called Analytics, but we also have something called Distance Financials as well, that provides more detail, actually. I have it on the Occupancy Report. We also have some Occupancy Reports as well. So, um, all this system here is built on a a system of formulas basically so it's very flexible it allows you to create your or your own uh, kpis your metrics and overall numbers and how the revenues are divided um, this is achieved through here through this system of formulas that you can configure to meet your business goals and needs. so basically this is so flexible that can um that, that can work with any business model that you have you can even configure it to, to match your channel setup. For instance, if you need to know how much commission you're paying to OPAs or how much payment fees or taxes you are collecting and how is it going to be divided between you and your owners or how it, it all depends on your business model, but it can all be reflected here. And once you create these formulas, then they will, uh, our system will calculate all the values and they will appear here in the financial report. And, and like I said before, um, you have here some KPIs, rental revenue, and I spoke to occupancy rate, etc. You can see some graphs as well based on those formulas. So uh, maybe you want to see ADR and forget if I don't have a lot of data here because this is my test account anyway. My fake business is not doing very well. <laughs> you can decide then to have uh, gross revenue per channel as well or all channels. So you show all these graphs here. Um, you can also select the where the data starts, the data point starts. So uh, if the data is calculated by checking, by checkout, reservation created, calendar. By calendar we mean that um, so if a reservation falls into in between two months, we are able to separate the financials uh, in between the, the two months. You can select some nice things here, different types of charts, etc. And also you have a view of what is upcoming. So you can actually see what's coming in the next days. Actually by default is seven days, but uh, you can use the, the, uh, the calendar to see a little bit more in the future. This is not for custom. This is basically how are you doing in the future? How many reservations do you have in the future? And what's the value of them? Um, then when it comes to listings financials here, uh, remember that I show you all these, uh, these uh, formulas. But you can, be, you can build this report. This is a more detailed report with the formulas, with all the different fields per reservation, et cetera. And you can do it by reservation of listing as well. Uh, again, you can choose the period of times that you want to have this view. So basically, the important thing about this is that we are able to bring all of the financials from all of the uh, channels all of the reservations that come from the different channels and you have just one place where you can see all the financials and even better with the integration with booking trust all of this data fall, uh, flows to booking trust so your accounting is going to be based on this as well and the software that booking trust provides as well and you can be sure that it's the uh, it's very very accurate as well so i mentioned earlier so we have financial reporting uh, like 
this is like a business intelligence tool. Uh, we also have some uh, occupancy reports as well that you can modify as you like. So we have days available, days booked, owner's days, etc. But we also have this tool that we call owner statements. And owner statements is basically based on the same um, uh, formula system and information system that we have for financial reporting. But it basically allows you to create a PDF invoice of the actual um, statement. And maybe I just should um, increase the view here. It's, it's just one template that we create with all the information, with the guest name, listing name, nights, channel, etc. Et and you can decide, I mean, it's so flexible that you can decide how to build it. So all these columns here are up to your uh, customization um, based on the formulas that you have. You can keep track of expenses and extras as well, and then you decide whether they add or they subtract to the, uh, to the total of the statement. And then you can be in the total with all the information above. Um, you can also assign uh, um, these owner statements to a particular owner, some owners, and they will be able to uh, see these in host away. They will be able to see their KPIs as well. You can edit for them. And, and basically, you can allow them to download the invoice, for instance, every month. So. I think that the, uh, the, uh, the key here is that um, we are able to get all the financials from all the channels. We are able to itemize them. We're able to recognize all of the different, um, all the different financial fields of a reservation. We're able to recognize what commission you're paying to, to Airbnb, to Verbo, to Expedia, to Booking.com, etc. And also what commission you're paying to payment providers like a Stripe. And all of that information is here, and then you're able to uh, understand how your business is performing. And with the integration with Booking Trust, all that data floats to, to Booking Trust for your accounting purposes there. And so if you guys have any questions, um, please type them on the, I think there's a questions. Right, so there's a question, uh, how do you call it? There's a Q&A. There's a, a Q&A, yeah, the, and there's the, a chat as well. The, yeah. yeah. So any questions right. you, you may have, we are happy to, to answer, of course. I would, um, I, I would like to add at this point, you know, the, the, the financial reporting within HostAway is very comprehensive, and, and I, I guess it probably bring, brings up a question as to, well, if this is comprehensive enough reporting, why do we need you know, accounting underneath this? Um, and, you know, I, I think I want to just address that point is that the difference between what the PMS reports on and what actually happens in your bank account can be different. So the PMS basically reports on what actually happened, you know, in the outside world and how and the revenue by bookings Sometimes that money may or may not, you know, hit your bank account. Sometimes Airbnb, for example, might just hold, especially if you've got a number of accounts, might hold accounts. And if you've got a lot of money, you might miss 10 grand's worth of money that you think is coming in because the PMS said it's been done. Um, but you don't, you won't, sometimes, you know, I know of cases where people have not found that out for at least two months and they've realized they're $10,000 down. Now, um, these sort of things, you know, and so, and also the costs of running your business and what happens when the when these bookings and these data come in um, <clears throat> is that we also look after all the management fees and we can take all the commissions out and we organize how all that money gets split up at the end as well. So, you know, so essentially, you know, the difference between these reports and the accounting in the back end are, are very similar and they're very linked but they are essentially two different aspects of the business. That's, uh, that's very true. And um, also th there's an entirely different aspect here that we uh, we're not gonna cover in this, this webinar, but I just wanted to highlight it. A lot of 
property managers, um, when I when I talk to them, I, they they say that they are well. Quite often, we we need to change the way we do do business for various reasons. Um, and uh, for example, you get on a new property owner who has a different has a new proposal for how to work together, a new business model. Now, um, Hostaway and any accountant is flexible enough to accommodate dif these different different business models. Uh, but one thing that I, I one mistake that I quite often see property managers do is they haven't given a lot of thought to which of the costs go before and after it's divided with the owners. And um, and that's something that uh, that can be quite complex. But that's where I would say talk to an accountant and say, look, this is the way it's set up today, because right now we're at a unique situation in um, in the history of vacation rentals. Right now, vacation rentals for those who have them, they're the most valuable ever. We're seeing the highest highest occupancy rate and highest. Uh, highest um, daily rates as well. Um, at the same time, the, the owners are, well, it's getting more and more expensive to buy vacation rentals. The, the assets are appreciating extremely fast. Now, as a result of that, because of the lower interest rates, returns are, are eventually not, not gonna be as good as they are today. They're, they're gonna go down. And uh, that's not necessarily a bad thing. But keep in mind that when you're managing someone's properties, if they have made a financial commitment to buy vacation rentals, they are looking for the best possible outcome when it comes to the return on investment that they're getting. And I'd like to highlight here what, uh, what Craig said. When you go to your bank and ask how much money you have, you, you don't want to wait one day. So as long as you keep that trust with the property owners, you have the complete freedom to set up the business the way you want. For example, the way you manage cleaning fees, do you take them off and then pay your cleaners or do you add them on and do you divide them? How you do that, the owners don't really care. I can tell you, I can tell you that much. How you, how you manage distribution fees, various different uh, fees that are in your business, um, I often hear property managers say, oh, but that's not within our contract. Uh, now, I'm not an accountant as, as a hobby, like, uh, like the two other participants here in the webinar, but I am a lawyer as a hobby. And I, I've looked at quite a few owner contracts and very few of them clearly define how to manage all the different fees. And I can, I can tell you that quite a few property managers have been able to make massive improvements to their business by changing the way they use financial reporting and accounting while keeping the property owners happy because they're maintaining the properties and providing good return on investment. And at the same time, uh, being very transparent about it, giving the owner statements. And, um, and I think that's important for property managers this time to remember that uh, that the property owners, they're, they're losing power. They're, they're, they don't have the same authority that they used to. Um, because if you got a small property owner who has one vacation rental, they're gonna be very passionate about it. But the fact is that right now there's fewer and fewer of those around. The people that can afford to buy new vacation rental properties today, they already have a couple. They don't have time to go and, and look at everything that you do uh, and try to find flaws and mistakes. So don't, don't think that they're doing that. Instead, just work on earning their trust. Use transparent processes. People who have five or 50 vacation rentals, they probably appreciate you using the term trust accounting in the first place. Use these things and professional tools to make yourself look professional. After that, you can, you can set up and run your business uh, any way you want. Keep that in, keep that in mind. Um, there's a question here. Where can we see a demo for booking trust? Perhaps Craig would like to answer that. Um, yeah, I think the, the, well, the demo for booking trust really, you can go to our website, um, you can make an inquiry and you'll get a reply there and book in a time for a demo. Um, we are in Australia. Um, so, but we can organize times, you know, like this, for example. Um, so, yeah, it's best to, although, you know, maybe we talk to Marcus and if, you know, if there is enough 
inquiries to do, you know, put maybe some other webinar on, you know, how booking trust and more from a from a product point of view, how booking trust and host away really work together and show what happens, you know. So, you know, I guess we'll, you know, if you if that doesn't, if we don't hear from us in that respect, just please book in a demo and a time from our website. Yeah, you can also go to the to the Hostaway marketplace. Whether you're if you're a customer, you can log into the dashboard, or you can just go to our website. Uh, every one of our more than one hundred partners, including Booking Trust, has a description and a link to to book a demo right there. All right. Do we have any more questions? Now is the now is the time to ask. Um, there was a question here which I might answer is that, you know, again, uh, this it goes back to the financial reporting and the owner's portal and whether this, whether Booking Trust replaces the, the owner's portal in HostAway. Um, <clears throat> now, they're, again, they're, they're two, again, I stress they're two separate things is that the owner's portal in HostAway is a valuable tool for the owners to understand, you know, on a broad perspective, you know, and, you know, exactly what goes on in their property gives them confidence that there is you know there are bookings coming ahead from a trust accounting point of view or from accounting point of view we're not really that concerned with bookings how many bookings ahead are coming we're only concerned with how much what money is actually hit the bank but if the money doesn't hit the bank we don't know we don't care we don't know about the booking it's got nothing to do with us we only look after the money that hits the bank we do have all the records of bookings that you know that are in advance, but again, from a reporting point of view, um, they're just sitting there waiting for the money. So you know, it really is a different perspective um, about where that works. And for a lot of companies, especially bigger companies, um, <clears throat> there are they they're two different sections, two different parts. There's the front office looks after the bookings looks after all the property management, all the booking, checking in, all the payments and all those sorts of things. Um, and then there's a separate department that looks after checking that all the money, once it hits your account or the trust or all the trust accounting aspect is actually a separate department. And they basically don't even talk to each other. That's how separate the, the two um, jobs are. They're different tasks as, you know, and I'm talking about big businesses, um, you know, 70 room hotels, they're two different tasks. So <clears throat> there is a very distinct difference between the two um, parts, but when you're starting or you know in a in a business where you're doing it all yourself, sometimes it's not that easy to distinguish between what happens, getting a booking and the money coming in. It all seems to be part of the same process, but the software to get the bookings and the software to look after the money. Um, are essentially, you know, very different tasks. Um, again, one day, maybe somebody's going to make some software that does all of those things really well. But, you know, at this point, both those tasks are very complex operations and both of them need specialized um, teams to make those things happen. Very good point, uh, Craig, thank you for that. We got a question here from Gladys about setting, setting all of this up. Uh, I, I could maybe, I don't want to advertise too much, but uh, we do offer uh, unlimited support at Hostaway. So if you're a Hostaway customer and want, want to know anything specific about how to set this up, just uh, reach out at support at hostaway.com. We'll be happy to get a call, on a call and, uh, and work this out with you. Uh, let's see here. There's one more question. Here's, here's a question from Mark. I think this is a good question for Craig. We have five properties at the moment. Should we start using Booking Trust now or wait till we get to 10 plus properties? Really, really good question. What do you think, Craig? Um, I always think that it's easier to start, easier to start when you're small. Um, it becomes, as you get, as, when you get to 10 properties, again, 10 properties, that's it, relatively easy to start with at that point. Um, but certainly after 10, you really should be starting something by 10 properties. But again, um, we've got clients with five properties. We've got clients with 150 properties. 
Um, it, you know, they, it is really just a matter of when you decide is um, that, <clears throat> yeah, there is no lower limit, um, but I would suggest that, you know, and that's, I suggest, yeah, I'd, you should start at any point really. Um, yeah, don't wait. All right, then we have a uh, have a really good question here. There's actually uh, one one model here. It's a question from from Brittany, who says that the way they're doing it right now is that all the money actually goes to the property owner uh, instead of going to the property manager, and then they just invoice the the property owners and hope they they get their share of of the money. And they're looking at going to the opposite side where they, they take the money in and use, use trust accounting and then, then disperse the money to their own business and to the owners. Um, I actually don't know. Well, the question is what's, what's better in the long term? I, it's, it's a really good question. I actually don't know the answer. So maybe Maria or, or Craig would like to chip in. What are the, the benefits of, of both of these business models? I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this because I, I have come across this before. Um, first of all, um, it is, it only happens for people who've just started out. They always change to a model where they collect the money. Um, I mean, obviously you're at the mercy of, you know, the owner is paying invoices and that's fine. Eventually, you know, they will pay their invoices. Um, but at the end of the day, you're not in control of anything. First of all, it's very easy for an owner then to just flick that on that business onto somebody else. That's, that's one aspect because, you know, they're in control of, you know, of where the money comes from. Um, and secondly, you, you also, for all your other expenses, um, it, it takes a lot of time to write these invoices up, send them out. Um, and it becomes unmanageable after a certain, certain number of points to, properties to do that um, but from an owner point of view um, all owners and if you're new and inexperienced as a property manager from an owner point of view it's very advantageous for them because they get their money and you get yours later um, so <clears throat> from an accounting and a business point of view um, it's still highly recommended that the money goes into a particular account and you're in charge of dispersing it um, and you're in charge of where all that money goes and your expenses. Hard to argue that with an owner, but as you take on new owners, um, it becomes far easier. And, you know, and that is the, the model for 90%, 99% of all, of, of, of all property managers, model of money going into a central account. I think what I can say here is that what it, what it helps a little bit the relationship between the property manager and the owner is to show a little bit of transparency. And that's why tools like owner statements and allowing a little bit of uh, vis um, visualization of what they're going to get at the end of the month, it's what brings a little bit of the trust as well between the PM and the owner. But you're right. I mean, and you touched a very good point before that yes, reporting, financial report is not the same as accountancy. Accountancy, it's more like what's money it's in bank for sure. In here, what we're trying to do is to give you a very, uh, the most accurate view that you can have of your numbers as they are today. Very good points. Uh, we got a we got a good question here from from a deal regarding accounting versus trust accounting. Uh, Adil is asking, how would this be different from having an accountant using QuickBooks or, or QuickBooks or Xerox for our management business? Um, how it would be different from, out, from an outcome point of view? Um, if you're running, if they're reconciling through Xero and they're reconciling through QuickBooks and they're creating different property accounts within QuickBooks and you're sending them the information and they're putting in the, and you've got cheap enough accountants who can do all that stuff using those tools. Um, and you're not running a state where it's legislated for trust accounting um, and you're happy with the outcome. Um, I'm certainly not suggesting anybody who's happy with the way that they're accounting um, and that's reconciled and it's working and they're happy with how much they're paying their accountant. 
Um, I'm certainly not suggesting you need to, to shift across um, to purpose-built software. Um, so how is it different? Um, it's only different if you're actually doing the work itself from an, from an accountant's point of view, from your point of view as, an, as a property manager, you get your owner's statement. It seems to be transparent. All the money is accounted for. Um, essentially, there's no difference unless you're actually doing the work. Good, good answer. I could also add there uh, a lot of property managers are, are raising raising capital uh, from investors and in a, in a due diligence, if you're managing other people's money as your business model, because you're quite literally managing their most valuable assets, the real estate, um, and also the income that comes from that, and not using trust accounting, it puts you your company at a massive liability. Now that liability may not be uh, be a bad thing for, for your business. I mean, a business either works or it doesn't. It can go bankrupt and then that's it, that's okay. However, for an investor who's gonna do a due diligence, who's gonna have accountants and they're gonna have lawyers review every part of your business, uh, you're much better off uh, setting up everything regarding your corporate governance before you even start talking to investors. Um, let's see here. So uh, there's a question here. I think it's uh, for, uh, for Maria. Uh, can you measure the margin gain percentage from direct bookings versus OTA channels? Yes, you can. You can you can understand what is your margin by uh, different channels, and you can, like I mentioned before, you can create any formula to calculate that, and you will be able to see it on your reporting for sure. Yeah. All right. Then there's an Australian question. I'm I'm very happy. Sorry about the the date. We we sent out the email, and only later did we realize that the 29th is actually the 30th. We managed to get the time zone right. I'm, I'm very happy to see some Australians here. We got Matt, um, who is from Australia, and he's essentially asking, are we legally required to have trust accounting? Um, yeah, Matt, in New South Wales, it's a gray area. I'm just going to say out, out loud, it's a gray area. If you're in Queensland, they're pretty much locked tight. In New South Wales, technically, if you're managing two properties on behalf of owners, um, then yes, you do. You are required to have trust accounting. Um, <clears throat> that's the, that's the the technical legal point of view, um, and I'll just leave that question there at that point. I can't really give any advice about how to to work with that, but um, yes, you are. Wow, that's a lot of great questions. I'm, I'm very happy so many people uh, turn up here. Uh, there's a good question here from, from Mark, also to Craig. How, how does the onboarding to Booking Trust uh, work? Um, okay, so what we do is we work out, um, we sit down and have a, a, a talk first of all and fill in some forms about your management fee structures. Um, so we set up your global fee structures we import all the properties from HostAway. We set up your interface. Um, we import the, the book, forward bookings from a certain date. Um, and again, depends whether you're oper operating, what, what sort of account you're operating. We make sure that there's two separate accounts. Um, we get your opening bank balances, and then we teach you how to reconcile your accounts each day um, and talk you through the reconciliation disbursement process. So the onboarding, process is um you know it takes you know 24 hours um and then there is some training but then there's training in between yeah go ahead uh maria did you have anything no just 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 to add to that if obviously you're working with host away we have people onboarding you here as well, and it's very easy to connect to Book and Trust from from the Hostaway system. So basically, you get your key, and then obviously you have to have an account with Book and Trust, and uh, and that um, that key will work on the uh, on the Book and Trust software, and will import all the data from Hostaway to Book and Trust. All right.
right. I think those were those were all the questions. Uh, I wanted uh, wanted to thank you all for joining. Uh, I'm I'm very positively surprised by the by the quality of questions. If, if you're if you're joining this um, this webinar and you um, you're asking these type of questions, you clearly are on the right path. And uh, and uh, well, there's two two more questions here. Uh, is the connection between Hostway and Booking Trust a two-way connection? No, we just we just pulled data down from Hostway. It does not go back up to Hostway. No, but we make all this data available. So you, um, uh, I guess there is no need to have it two ways, basically. Exactly. The, the data comes from the same source, so there's uh, not not too much of a need for that. Uh, does trust accounting use separate bank accounts for each property? I think that's a really good question. Yeah, no, it doesn't. It goes in, into one bank account. The, the trust accounting software itself creates virtual accounts within that, but it only has requires one bank account. All right, and then one more. Do we have a process for migrating from Zero or QuickBooks to the Booking Trust? Um, no, there's no. We don't need to import any data from Zero or QuickBooks. Um, you would have to, again, if there's any forward balances that need to be bought across, um, they would be put in um, either via report or manually. Depends how large your company is. Final question here. Is there any tax preparation tips or info in Booking Trust for tax time? No, we try to keep out of taxation. It's from, a, from our point of view, we don't really deal with the taxation, your own business taxation or any of those things. We just deal with getting the money off to the owners. And obviously in the States, you know, there are some taxation requirements in terms of, of, a, of, of reporting. Um, but you know, again, that's really down for at your, your discount. Wow, now the question started uh, pouring in here. So, uh, so does the trust accounting software account for the other payment processors such as Stripe as used by Verbo or Airbnb's native card processor? Um, we, we, do, we do have an interface with Stripe. We haven't implemented it with HostAway at this point. Um, that's on the cards. Um, in terms of the APIs into VRBO and, and Airbnb don't have access for that sort of information as an API. Um, and <clears throat> we do deal with virtual cards in essence. Um, but again, it's a very specific question that's probably best answered, you know, with um, we do have, do have ways to work with those. Yes. All right. Can fees be paid from the trust accounting? Um, they can. And again, depends where you are. In, in Australia, we have uh, a banking format that we export the files. And I guess by fees, we're talking about payments to services and clients and, and creditors, as well as your own fees. Um, we create an export file. It's the same in the States. They have an AH, uh, some format in the States, which we export to, which can generally be uploaded to your bank. All right, then once again, last question, we're running out on time here, but uh, is Booking Trust able to connect directly to bank accounts? Um, this question is about Canada, but I guess the question is applicable to, to the US as well. Um, so it's starting to rain here. I might just put my headphones on. I'm not sure how my sound is. Um, no, we don't connect directly to the bank accounts. Um, hopefully you can hear me. I'm just going to put this microphone in. Um, all the information is put in um, from your bank account statement. We don't have any access to accounts directly. All right. And then last question. How does the trust accounting process, how is it different between properties managed by, sorry, owned by other owners versus those that are actually owned by the property manager themselves? Is there any difference? Um, how's it different? 
um, it, no, it's let's say it's not different. The, the approaches, I mean, the, the approaches should be the same. When we're talking about trust accounting, we're just talking about good accounting practices in general, compliance accounting. So if you're running your own business and you miss a few fees, you know, or sorry, you're managing your own property, you miss a few fees, nobody really cares, right? You get the money anyway. Um, if you're doing it on behalf of owners, and again, if we're talking five or 10 properties, not a big deal. But if you get to 50 properties, 20 properties, you know, and you're dealing with a million dollars, and you know, we've got accounts there that are sitting with $1.5 million worth of money in their accounts of other people's money. So again, the scale of problem, you know, you can get away with it up to a certain point. And, and, but accuracy, you know, across the board, we're just going accuracy across the board in the accounting sphere is just worth it for its own ends, basically. There's a question for, for Hosele. I think I can answer that. Uh, Adil is, uh, is saying that the numbers seem to be, to be a bit off when looking at a specific property by month. For example, I could say when we, we first started getting revenues uh, at, uh, at Hostelway many years ago, and I started talking to our accountant, I remember when he showed me the report of how much money we made, which wasn't a lot, to be honest, uh, I was I was pretty pretty frustrated because it was, it was entirely different than, than what our business was doing. And, um, and I think this is the, the same case here. Um, and I'm, I'm sure Craig can also attest to that. Now, in, in Hostelway, there's many different ways uh, to, to define how, how the money should be divided. For example, Airbnb, they do it in a very specific way, which is that they use the check-in date and they, that's the payout date. So your bank account essentially is defined not on when the guest is staying, but rather just based on when they're checking in. And this is why we at Hostelway accommodate many different op options of showing this data. Um, because on Verbo, it's more common that there's a different date before the guest checks in when they actually pay for it. Um, so it can be calculated any way you want, uh, but uh, you also asked who you can go over it with Hostaway. Uh, we have unlimited support, um, the highest rated if you, if you check reviews. So please reach out to support and let's get on a call and go through these numbers with you. Um, I think that was the last question, and I, we are also running low on time. Thank you, everyone, uh, for joining and asking so, such great questions. Um, and to, to give a quick summary, uh, if you're wondering if you need to worry about accounting or if you should actually set this up properly and go with trust accounting, uh, it really depends on your ambition. If you manage one property for yourself and you're not even sure if you're going to bring on more properties, Probably you don't need to worry, if the, even if there's an audit, as long as you got all the receipts, you can always fix the accounting part later. But if you're dealing with other people's money and you're planning to scale up, if you want to become like Vacasa and have 30,000 units one day, then you, you got to set it up the right way. And the earlier you start, the easier. It's like building a house, build the foundation properly. You can fix everything else later, but don't make mistakes with the foundation. So uh, once again, thanks, Craig. Thanks, Maria, for joining us. And everyone, have a lovely morning, afternoon, or evening, or night. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, everyone. Goodbye. Okay.